My name is Ken Gestring, and my retired rank now is Master Sergeant, and I am currently living in Niceville, Florida. Came in in 86, uh, started out at Keesley Air Force Base. I came in as a 902, and that's a medic from just basic family practice clinic to surgery clinic to ICU as a heart technician to the ER. I, was, I flew for a couple of years as an air, air medical evacuation technician. And when I was in Hawaii, I was a uh, mission controller. Uh, and that was coordinating the air vac missions in the Pacific. I uh, got uh, my deployment over to Afghanistan. So that was uh, almost a year long experience. Uh, we, you know, a lot of that uh, training gets included in there and stuff like that. And, and then the actual deployment's nine months. We had uh, engineers that would go out and inspect uh, different projects, uh, roads, buildings, schools, walls, district centers, bridges, whatever things that were being funded by the government, uh, we would have those uh, engineers inspect them, make sure they were being to a quality standard. And we were out wandering around and um, trying to find this project to inspect. Spent uh, nearly an hour trying to find it. And I, th I think that was probably part of the setup for us. Um, after coming back and, and not seeing what we wanted, um, we were walking back on a, on a little trail. Our vehicles were all lined up in a straight line. There was four of our MRAPs, and then we had a lead vehicle of a um, Afghan National Police 4x4 pickup truck. They got got all the way back to the vehicles and stuff and there was another little crowd of onlookers that were kind of standing, I don't know, about 30 yards or so from the front of the first vehicle. There's probably 20 or 30 hanging out there. So when we got back um, and we walked in front of the vehicles and then everybody kind of went to disperse and kind of start making their way back to their own vehicle. Well, I went around the front of the vehicle and kind of went out um, off the road and kind of stood in position to keep security out a while until everybody started to load up. Just as I was about in position, that's when the grenade went off and blew up right behind us. And um, so it shot shrapnel pieces everywhere. And of course, everybody started running that was in the little crowd and stuff. And then, uh, I mean, it, it blew me down to the ground and I guess the rest of everybody else that was halfway decently close, they guesstimated I was about 15 feet away. And so I just stayed on the ground and I, I knew something had hit me. And so I just stayed on the ground, crawled to the nearest vehicle. And then we all, kind of just, you know, looked around, make sure everything was secured and see who was potentially maybe going to shoot at us or do something else. And then, and then all of a sudden my medic senses just, that's when I just was like, okay, I know there's other people hurt. There's people right there with me hurt. I need to go and see what I, I can do to help these people. Well, as fortune is, my uh, big backpack, my medical backpack, was in the last vehicle, or that was my vehicle. So we're talking about 50 yards away. So the uh, Army captain, that's the platoon leader, um, told another two or three guys to run with me back to my vehicle and keep me secure. So that's what we did, ran back to my vehicle, got my medical bag, and then we ran down the other side of the vehicles and uh, came all the way back up front and there was already some people laying down on the ground and I just set up what they call a, a CCP or a casualty collection point. There's four kids that were unable to be attended to, they were already dead. And that, I mean, it's really saddening for me because they were all about my kids' age. I just went ahead and started treating the people that were there that I could take care of. and. Um, there was uh, another Afghan um, policeman that was severely injured that uh, I took care of as well as I could and um, patched him up, put airways in him, and um, 
got them loaded up to one of their vehicles so they could they were going to take him to one of their local hospitals but I found out he eventually died later also um, so I ended up taking care of 12 other people uh, Army and Air Force personnel and um, two other uh, A&P personnel and one of our um, interpreters there was a, a, a basically a safe haven for us to go to that had Americans and it was kind of a joint service type area and then we got back there and then I reevaluated everybody and I called it all in um, and then <clears throat> after we reassessed all the injuries and stuff and re-patched up whatever people were still bleeding or whatever then um, we loaded back up and then went back to our little fob and then that's where um, the, uh, the doc that was our Air Force doc that I was working for was there with the rest of the Army medics and Air Force medics. I had injured my neck and my back and shrapnel on my leg. My recovery was still kind of ongoing. The shrapnel, I, I basically took it out myself uh, while I was at our clinic there. Um, uh, mine, like I said, were in my leg, so I wanted to take them out. So. Um, I did let the, uh, there was a, a PA there and that was uh, helping out, um, an Army PA, and uh, she goes, can I at least numb it up for you? And I said, sure, you know, you can do all that part of it, but I want to be take, I want to take it out. So but she made the incisions and then I took the tweezers and pulled them out myself. I thought uh, since retiring I would be golfing a lot and <laughs> it hadn't worked out that way. No, I've just been working a lot on uh, our new house. I think the most obvious is probably meeting the President Bush. You don't get that chance very often. And so I think that's probably one of the bigger highlights. And then, of course, uh, I've just started getting into some of these different Wounded Warrior events. Uh, I played in the Warrior Games earlier this year for the Air Force in Colorado Springs. So that was kind of my initial initiation to the Wounded Warrior events. So um, I, I'm just happy about meeting new people that uh, are also uh, wounded, injured personnel, you know, that uh, I will share different stories with. I think that will be one of the biggest highlights. Golf is just gravy, you know. That's just extra toppings.